Gastrointestinal complications of diabetes. The gastrointestinal system is a tube that extends from the mouth to the anus. It is responsible for the digestion and absorption of nutrients. The gastrointestinal system is composed of the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestines, and the large intestines. Diabetes is a disease that affects many people. It is a disease where the body is not able to control blood sugar levels, causing people to have elevated sugar. When sugar is elevated for long periods of time, it can cause the GI system to malfunction, impairing its ability to move food along it. We will break down these gastrointestinal complications by anatomical divisions. These divisions are esophageal problems, stomach problems, small intestine problems, and finally, large intestine problems. Problems of the esophagus occur when it is not able to move food along properly due to reduced muscle contraction. The valve at the bottom of the esophagus, called the sphincter, can also be dysfunctional. People affected will experience heartburn, which is a burning sensation in the chest caused by acid reflux into the esophagus. Secondly, people with diabetes can have difficulty swallowing due to nerve damage of the muscles in the esophagus. To help reduce the risk of esophageal problems, a person can maintain better control of their blood sugar. Medications can also be prescribed by a physician to reduce the burning sensation felt with heartburn. A problem of the stomach that patients with diabetes can have is gastroparesis. Gastroparesis is when the stomach takes longer to move food out. This can cause an increase in bacterial growth and can have a blockage in the stomach. Patients affected by gastroparesis can suffer from heartburn, nausea, which is a sick feeling, vomiting, early satiety, which is when a person feels full really quickly. It can cause pain in the stomach, bloating. People tend to eat less because eating causes discomfort. Diabetics can have a hard time keeping their blood sugars under control. Gastroparesis is treated by eating smaller meals but eating more frequently. Also, avoiding high fat and high fiber foods can reduce the symptoms. When eating, it is recommended that fluid in the diet is increased. If the lifestyle modifications do not work, then a person may be put on medications such as Reglan, Propulsid, or Erythromycin. Enteropathy is a condition that can affect the small and large intestine. Enteropathy is a disease where the nerves are not signaling to the muscles of the gastrointestinal tract. Because the muscles are not being stimulated, food is not moved along properly, it can cause bacteria to build up in the intestine. People affected by enteropathy of the intestine suffer from abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, and constipation. To reduce these symptoms, a person can go on a high fiber diet and can take mild laxatives for the constipation. Some of the medications that can be used are Raglan, Cisapride, and broad spectrum antibiotics. Finally, we have come to the end of the GI tract and the last complication of diabetes. Poorly controlled diabetes can impair the function of the internal and external anal sphincter. When a person loses control of their internal and external anal sphincter, they can have difficulty holding in bowel movements, which can lead to washroom accidents. Treatments for fecal incontinence are better control of glucose, also to reduce the frequency of bowel movements and by increasing the amount of fiber in the diet which can increase the bulk of the feces. Some other complications of poorly controlled diabetes are yeast infections in the throat and mouth which are referred to as oral thrush. Diabetics also have an increased risk of celiac disease. Celiac disease is an allergy to gluten. Finally, diabetics are at increased risk for fatty liver and gallstones. Thank you for watching, and thank you to our narrator, Evan Head. Please visit your local family physician if you have any questions or concerns relating to the preceding video.